Good morning. Welcome to St. Jude the Apostle Church for today's celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Be with your spirit. Good morning. We want to welcome you to this second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. The divine mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is a wellspring of joy, serenity, and peace, which we ourselves in these times of difficulty, pain, and suffering throughout our nation and the world is something each and every one of us need. Let us turn to our Savior in thanksgiving and gratitude for the divine mercy which unites us to the most holy trinity of our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And from that being united with our Lord Jesus Christ, we come to know the great love of God and how that love is outpoured in his divine mercy. Lord Jesus, you are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us pardon and peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast 
Kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all people. And every day the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love 
letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through various trials, so that, you, that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even through tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him, you rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, 
put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving but believe Thomas answered and said to him my Lord and my God Jesus said to him have you come to believe because you have seen me blessed are those who have not seen and have believed now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On this second Sunday of Easter, we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. The outpouring of God's love through His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in His suffering, His death, and resurrection. That love of God is what gives us salvation itself. For salvation is dependent on God's divine mercy. And never more so that in times of testing and pain and suffering, do we as a people contemplate the mystery of God's divine mercy. And never more so in those times of pain and suffering do we call upon God's mercy in our lives. This is one of those times. We as a people throughout the world, all of humanity, together is sharing in this time of testing and pain and suffering as we live through this pandemic. And people throughout the world not only are contemplating what God's mercy means, but they are calling upon God's divine mercy. And we see that mercy being poured out upon us. God's love being made real and present in our lives today as we ourselves respond to this pandemic. Look at the people around us and see how merciful and loving they are. Look and see how doctors and nurses and other medical people are responding to the needs daily of those who have been afflicted with the coronavirus. Simply see the first responders who have to respond to these situations. The courage, God's mercy, gives us courage and strength, hope and faith. It is the wellspring of God's joy and serenity and peace. That's what enables these people to be able to respond, such as our police officers and firefighters, or those who are working in the grocery stores, those who are delivery drivers, making sure that the products get to market and get to our table, that we have everything that we need. If you don't think God's divine mercy is real and present among us, look around. Look at how you're responding yourselves to the needs of our community, the needs of your neighbors. I see that divine mercy real and present in the amount of food that is being brought for our food pantries who we supply that. We're making runs two and three times a week. We only used to do it once a week. I see that divine mercy being poured out by our parishioners coming together, making phone calls to more than 2,000 families, not individuals, families. That's a lot of people. To pray with them, to check and see how they're doing, if there's anything they need from us here at St. Jude and St. Michael's. See that divine mercy in how you're checking on your own neighbors, especially the elderly neighbors to see if they need anything, and you're going marketing for them, as well as your own family members. 
who cannot go to the market on their own. God's divine mercy is all around us. And just like those apostles who were locked away in that upper room, we ourselves need to see that divine mercy made real and present in our own lives. And the one who makes that divine mercy real and present is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because divine mercy, as our icon shows, radiates from Christ. Those beams of light give us hope and give us joy. There is our wellspring of joy. There is where we find serenity and peace in unsettling times. Jesus understands that. He understood that with the apostles, that they were very unsettled. They were hidden away in that upper room after Christ's crucifixion because they were fearful that what happened to Jesus would happen to them next. A logical response to a terrible crisis. In the same way, these are unsettled times for us, and we have kind of locked ourselves away, haven't we? Because we don't know, am I the next one to get the virus? But Jesus appears to us. As he appeared to those apostles in that upper room, and what does he say to them? Peace be with you. Father sent me, so I send you. And he gives them that peace to send out to all the world. They are being commissioned to bring the Father's divine mercy and peace to all the nations of the world. And they themselves were the first recipients of it. Because you can't give to others what you don't have. And we all need to have Christ's peace within us. Thomas wasn't there that night. Where was Thomas? We're not quite sure where Thomas was, but where was Thomas? The rest of them were all fearful. My read of the Gospel of John, this particular passage, is that Thomas was hardly a coward. He was out in the streets, evidently. He was amongst the people seeing what is going on. What are we here? He was trying to understand what they had heard from the women who were at the tomb, that the tomb was empty, trying to make sense of it all, and all it did for him was make him even more unsettled, evidently. And so he missed out on receiving that great wellspring of joy, of serenity and peace when Jesus appears to them in that upper room on that first night. And so when he does go back to the other apostles and they tell him, he is skeptical. His skepticism is looking for confirmation of faith. I mean, who amongst us hasn't had that experience? Who amongst us right now does not want to have a confirmation of faith as we're living through all this? Each and every one of us wants that. So when Thomas responds and says, I will not believe until I can place my finger in the nail marks and place my hand in his side. You know what's beautiful about all of this? The next week when Jesus appears to them in that upper room again, he answers Thomas's prayer. That prayer of skepticism. He answers that prayer. And he gives Thomas the opportunity to be able to believe. He does that for all of us as well. And so, for the third time in the gospel, he then says to Thomas, Peace be with you. Again, he says, the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
he sent the apostles out to all the nations of the world. And he's sending us out as well. He's sending us out with his mercy so that we ourselves can provide that mercy, that divine mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that what has been poured out upon us may be able to be poured out on others. So how are we being sent out? Well, right now, this is how we're being sent out. We're live streaming now. Do you know we created a new ministry in both parishes? The live streaming ministry? There is more than, I think, a dozen to 15 people between the two parishes that are enabling us, taking turns, live streaming this. That is Christ's divine mercy being poured out upon each and every one of us. That divine mercy is, is being seen in those things that I mentioned earlier by caring for our neighbors, shopping for them, making sure that they have everything they need, checking up on our family members and friends, helping those who are struggling so through these difficult times, especially financially, those who have been laid off, those who have been furloughed, those who have even lost their jobs. Christ's divine mercy is seen all around us. So Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. We are being sent forth as a wellspring of Christ's divine mercy, sharing the joy, the serenity, and the peace that can only emanate from Jesus Christ. Let us join together in the profession of our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are united as a people. And we call upon our Lord Jesus Christ to pour out his divine mercy upon us all as we present the prayers and the needs for our community, our nation, and the world. For the church, that through the gift of the Holy Spirit, we may deepen our faith and commitment to the Lord, even during these times of trial when we might be struggling to see the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who minister in Christ and all who are baptized, that we who have been given a new birth may offer compelling witness to Christ's resurrection with our words and our actions attending to the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of health care and essential workers, for all the elderly and the vulnerable, that God will keep them safe, and for all who are sick and suffering from the coronavirus or other maladies, that God in his mercy will grant them a speedy recovery 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we will renew our support for our parishes and food pantries and keep them strong as we reach out to our communities through them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The, need, the needs of all our parishioners of St. Jude the Apostle and St. Michael the Archangel Churches, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our beloved deceased, especially those closest to our hearts, for John and Elsie Burt, David Manning, David Manning III, Richard Keane, David Castle, John Finelli, Shirley Wild, and Ann M. Hogan Richter, for whom this Mass is offered. May they live forever in the presence of the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, in these unsettled times, we call out to you and ask for your mercy and help in our lives. Fill our hearts with the peace that can only come from your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Give us strength and courage during this time of testing and pain. Help us to find a joyfulness in our daily lives, a joyfulness that is rooted in our faith in you. We ask this is all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, 
and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Oh. petition to Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope and Edward, our bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially the parishioners of St. Jude the Apostle Church and St. Michael the Archangel Church, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrate the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sextus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and accounted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offer in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a 
a similar way when supper was ended. He took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victory, this holy victory, this spotless victory, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly confidence and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victory. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. And fallen. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few reminders. I'd like to remind everyone that you can make your Sunday contribution uh, easily by going either to our parish websites, either the St. Jude website for St. Jude or St. Michael's website for St. Michael's, or the parish apps for either parish as well, and just click on the giving button, and you can go to our secure site to make your Sunday contribution electronically. Many of you have made that decision to do so, and we greatly appreciate that. Or you can simply just mail in your envelope each week, which many of you are doing as well. I can't tell you how appreciative I am of all that. I am overwhelmed by your tremendous generosity in supporting both parishes. It is allowing us to continue on our ministry as a parish to all of our parishioners, reaching out not only to our parishioners, but the greater community around us as well. Thank you for your weekly donations, and I encourage you to please to continue to keep making them as well. Also, to remind you, that our parish churches are open every day. And the parish churches are open from the morning uh, till the late afternoon for you to come in, to pray, to light candles, to be with our Lord in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament itself. That is so important for us in times like this when we cannot receive the Eucharist as a parish community, as a communion of faith gathered together. Praying before the Blessed Sacrament is edifying, strengthening, and gives us that courage and peace that we all so long for and need in our lives these days as well. Today being Divine Mercy Sunday, Father Zach Chichester will be live streaming the praying of the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 p.m. this afternoon. So please go on, again, either of our Facebook pages, and you'll be able to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet with Father Zach on this Divine Mercy Sunday as well. Please remember also to continue to uh, make your contributions to our local food pantries uh, by simply dropping your food off at the entryway of each church. As I said in the homily today, we are making several uh, uh, deliveries to the food pantries, and they are so grateful to your generosity because it's helping feed those who have been especially hit hard by the shutdown caused by the coronavirus itself. Please know that myself, Father Zach, Deacon Warren, Deacon Bob, all of us hold you in our prayers as well as our parish staffs. And if there is anything that we can do, please do not hesitate to call. We are there to answer your calls and help in whatever way we possibly can. Have a wonderful day. You too, Father. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go Amen. forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia. Alleluia.